This is Salamancer. You are watching Sal TV Competitive Team Fortress 2, and today I'm going to bring you the world's most robotic demo man. Apparently, the engineer got his hands on a new test subject. Maybe it was GLaDOS. I don't know. But uh, we do have a game today between the Philly J Fry team in the red, and you see the sticky sticky jumper being used right now. And in the blue, it's going to be the 11th Robotic Platoon. Or should they be called the Pantoon? Because guess what? This is the Ready Steady Pan Tournament. And so we do have a uh, red team trying to uh, pretty much clump up here on the point. Of course, it's pretty much just going to be nonstop, you know, hitting each other with pan action. So I kind of get to talk about whatever I want because, <laughs> you know, there's, there's not a lot of strategy involved in panning. There is a little bit. I don't want to say there's there's nothing involved. But, um, you know, we'll kind of watch and see how these guys how these guys decide to try and win it. So right now they do hold the point. It's played as King of the Hill, and the last one I cast, it actually was uh, cut short because the players didn't have the right config or didn't have the right rule set. But the way it's really supposed to be played is three best of fives. So, it, I mean, that's that's long, <laughs> actually. Um, you know, it, basically one win is a best of five... Uh, a best of five fight on King of the Hill. So if you win three rounds, then that is apparently one one set, and you play three sets. We'll call them sets, that makes sense. Not as much sense as anything else. Anyway, uh, right now we do have times evening up here just a little bit for the teams, and does it even make sense to really... Oh, nice, nice milk play there from 86. Um, you do see both teams running a double Demo Man, because Demo Pan is outrageously overpowered. I mean, Demo gets a lot of mobility in this setting, a lot a lot more than hardly anybody else. Um, the rocket jumper from the soldier is okay, too. It gives him some mobility. He gets more health, but he's just so slow on the ground that trying to actually get up against uh, a scout or something, is, is it's tough to get in and deal the damage, and this scout's going to be able to outmaneuver you. But the Demo Man with the sticky jumper, you can get anywhere you want to really fast, and hardly anybody else can do that. So that's a useful thing. Plus, you move at pretty much normal speed. Scouts are still going to, you know, get around you. But uh, are they both running double scout as well right now? No, it looks like blue team, the 11th robotic platoon, is only using one scout. Two scouts being used on Philly J. Fry. Uh, each team is using that sniper for the Jurati, and Jurati is allowed in Ready Steady Pan. So, by the way, Philly J. Fry, probably a reference to My Little Pony, because it's F-I-L-L-Y. Uh -huh. Yeah, we get a lot of those here in the TF2 community, apparently. Nope, can't pull out the scatter gun. No, not the scatter gun. Whatever, it's fine. He's not actually anybody with it. It's just going to be pandemonium in here. Yeah, I know. It's like the lamest pun you could possibly think of. But it looks like Philly does lose it there, and that's going to go back to the 11th Robotic Platoon. So, um, how was my week, you might ask? Well, uh, it was pretty good, actually. So, I didn't do a lot of shoutcasting, which I kind of feel bad about. I was busy, um, you know, at work. Things are picking up again, getting kind of stressful. So, by the time I get home, it's like, okay, well, I'm feeling a little bit tired already. And then... Uh, and then there is the issue of making sure that I spend some time with the girlfriend, so I'll make sure I do that. And, and that leaves not a lot of heck of a time for, uh, for shoutcasting. But it's been a good week nonetheless, especially because the Valve TF2 mix-up match came out and, and was posted on the Augs cast, including other outtakes. But uh, I did a lot of the shoutcasting for that. So me and Seabear were, were hooking it up, and it was, yeah, it was a pretty good set. I enjoyed casting it. You should check them out. They're on the Augs cast now. And if you actually came here from the Augs cast, well, welcome to Sal TV. Hopefully you enjoy your stay here. This is going to be a, a pretty silly match, I'm going to say. Oh! Radiant Eclipse with the uh, the sick pans on lemons. Anyway, it looks like we still aren't finished up with this first round yet, so this is going to be a long video <laughs> of people panning each other. Um, let me do some more strategic analysis here, but, I mean, at the moment it's just... Uh, a one-player advantage for Philly J. Fry, and they're going to use that to mostly capture the point. 86 is just trying to jump in and give a little bit extra time for them, but he... I oh, haven't been taken down yet. Where is he? 86. There you go. And melee detection in TF2, is, it's it's kind of weird. I'm not going to lie. Most of the Source games have pretty weird melee detection, but it's, it's tough to program something that, you know, people get up close and and it doesn't act weird, just because of the ping involved. A lot of people are actually using that new robot chicken hat, too, and this guy isn't, so that's annoying. i got to find somebody who is. We have lost the the control point is Apparently being nobody tested. is. And I'm, I look like an idiot. I look like an idiot. I hope you guys are happy. Mr. 
Mr. Kate Upton trying his best to pan this demo down, but is he, he is in fact covered in milk. And so the milk, of course, if you don't know, uh, the mad milk from the scout is a weapon, we weaponized milk product uh, that when you hit your opponents with it, you you cause them to basically uh, give you health every time you smack them. If, if they're covered in milk, if you hit them, then you get some of that back as health. <clears throat> so it's really nice. If you cover your opponents in milk, it's basically like getting free heals every time you smack them with a pan. Looks like we do have a pan pyro now out here trying his best. It's uh, in overtime for the blue team right now, so 11th Robotic Platoon may be able to win this one pretty easily. Uh, although they are losing a couple players here, and Philly J. Fry still trying their best to keep us in overtime and win the round. I don't think they will be able to, though. Only a couple players left, and there you go. Round one of set one going to the 11th Robotic Platoon, and we're going to check out this rollout here from Mr. Kate Upton. Uh, and no, it's not actually milk. I mean, there's like a radio radiation warning on it, and it's, I think on the item itself, it actually says, like, milk product, and not, you know, milk. I don't, I don't even think it's dairy. I think it's uh, something else entirely. You know. Anyway, we are at the mid-fight here, and of course it's going to be an ex ever exciting mid-fight with two players already down for the Philly J. Fry team, the 11th Robotic Platoon, looking robotically competent. You know, they, they, they were just mechanically destroying their opponents on this first point, turning it into an assembly line of carnage against Philly J. Fry. So uh, you know, I'm, I'm afraid that our... Our brony friends might be getting sent to the glue factory at the end of this one. Because you know, you turn horses into glue, and they die. That's the joke. Um, no, Philly J. Fry, I mean, they're going to try and do some rocket jumping here, although apparently Muffler Man, not the most well-versed in jumping with the rockets, but oh, that Gerardi causing mini crits, and mini crits, quite useful for any situation. So, you, know, you cover somebody in Jurati and Mad Milk, and basically you're going to be dealing more damage to them and getting more health back every time you hit them. It's, uh, if you get covered with both those substances, pretty much the only response is just to back off, because you are pretty much not going to win that fight. Not going to happen at all. And, yep, there you go. He's already covered in Jurati, so he needs to back off. He may get flanked here a little bit. You can see this guy maybe try to use a rocket jumper. No, a couple players coming in. Cotton Bonbon bon gets taken out, and so does Lemons. So now we're seeing that uh, Philly J. Fry going to hold this point quite successfully. They are a little bit covered in Jurati here, but they are not having any trouble taking down this this one last demo man. Mr. Kate Upton giving them a little bit of trouble, and he does kind of smack that one opposing demo man, taking down Radiant Eclipse. But uh, there's just too many people there for him to really deal with effectively, and this scout he wants to go and take him out, but good rotation there. You see that the milked demo man run, retreating and running away right. behind. Oh, nice flank, though, by the Sex Raptor. Nonetheless, uh, apparently Sex Raptors died out a long time ago for a good reason. Because, <laughs> you know, they, they weren't able to uh, fulfill their role as regular Raptors. And the Sex, probably not all that good with all those talons and claws and teeth everywhere. So, yeah, I would be a fan. I mean, I know some people who are into that, but... I know the Verotic Platoon holds the point now once again. Uh, they're a little bit down in the time at this point, but uh, they're going to hold on to it for a while. As Philly J. Fry just now having their sniper respawn, and they lose a scout. Losing a scout its a pretty big deal in the PAN tournament. It's one less player you can run in and deal a lot of damage real fast. <laughs> My stream chat telling me, no, no, Sal secretly is a sex raptor. And you know what? Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. No comment. Um... Potatoes, though, going for a couple kills in here, taking down the British Pinkie Pie. Not sure why he's British exactly, but hey, it's cool. Come on, Potatoes. No! Cut down in his prime by a scout with a frying pan. That's a train track. Okay, there we go. Watch the point for a little bit here as Philly J. Fry pushing right back in. And you know what? They're probably fans of Futurama, too. We could definitely talk about that. I love me some Futurama. Um, they do have a new season, and I haven't actually watched any of it because I just don't watch TV, like, at all. And, uh... It's a personal failing of mine because Futurama is awesome and I probably need to just spend like an entire weekend watching that. The problem with doing that, of course, is that then I won't be shoutcasting at all because I'll be watching TV. Maybe I could shoutcast Futurama. Oh my gosh. No, that wouldn't work at all. Maybe somebody could make like skins in TF2, Futurama skins. So like you'd have... Uh, hmm, who would be who is the question. The sniper could probably be... Man, I don't know who would be who, except that I know that Zoidberg would probably have to be the pyro. Uh, 
but Philip J. Fry himself could probably be a scout. Might make a decent scout. Um, you'd have to have Zap Brannigan as a soldier, of course, because that they just jibe so well together. And then, uh, like, you'd have to have Professor Professor Farnsworth. Who would he be? Maybe the snipe? No, I don't know. Somebody who looks old. None of them really look old. But the sniper kind of looks old. Good panning going on here, and you see that uh, the, the robotic platoon is kind of tying up in the times. They're getting pretty close here. Oh, this demo man looks like he's actually just kind of AFK. That sucks. Maybe lagging out a little bit. And the Lilo would be. Oh, TMP in stream chat pointing out Lilo would have to be the demo man. If you don't get it, you need to watch more Futurama. Until you do. I like that. I do like that. Um, and then, of course, uh, Bone Masher pointing out that. Somebody did make Philip J. Fry's hair for the scout, but apparently Valve rejected it. And you can understand why, you know, copyright issues and all that. But I still want to see like an independent skin made, just so I could like put up a video of that one day. Shoutcasting Futurama in TF2, super hilarious. I would love it. Anyway, um, not a heck of a lot to talk about in this game so far. I mean, you can you can see the scores right now, and they're kind of favoring the robotic platoon a little bit. Uh, Muffler Man not having such a good game here, and it looks like he may be lagging a little bit. So that kind of sucks. Same for British Pinkie Pie. That they're possibly not having the best pan game of their lives right now. And the Robotic Platoon may just win this one as well. Which would mean that in the set, they only have to win one more round to take the set. Um, but yeah, it's in overtime right now. They're taking down the players as they run into this point. There's going to be a lot of overtime just because you'll, you'll see this uh, the respawn waves. It's really tough with all this melee going on to take down everybody at the same time. And, and sometimes it'll happen, but at the end of the rounds, we're going to see a long overtime most of the time because you just see one or two players filtering in and dying, and, and by the time they die, the next player is already getting there. The next player is respawned, and you get the idea. So um, Anyway, uh, yeah, so far the game not panning out all that well for Philly J. Fry. <laughs> oh, not only was that a terrible joke, it's not even mine. I keep stealing these from the stream chat. Oh, I've really... Uh, Hit rock bottom here. I'm just ashamed of myself. Yeah, maybe they make like, is there a group for people like me, like crappy puns anonymous, <laughs> led by Carlos Mencia? Anyway, uh, oh, oh, I'm gonna get sued. There's gonna be the robotic platoon capturing the point for the third time here. Um, you know, no offense to the stream stream viewers who who think that their puns are great, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, 86, I like his positioning there, actually. If we're going to talk seriously for just a moment, if I'm allowed to. Um, I do like the scout kind of hiding there. Because everybody's just going to be rushing straight for the point most of the time, you know? And it's it's not a very serious tournament, but if you can just take advantage of your opponent's expectations a little bit like that, and uh, as they run towards the point, kind of get around behind them, you, you get a couple free hits. And that's what 86 seems like he likes to do, is get those free hits. So, playing to win right now. 86, playing to win. So, nobody actually walking out this side, which is too bad, but he will still be able to get a flank. Um, he spots him. He's going to get some easy milk, I think. <laughs> easy milk. Wait. I don't even know if that was supposed to be funny. Uh, yeah, he does come in from behind and start stealing some damage here. It looks like uh, his teammate Lemons has gotten the you on know, potatoes. Lemons and potatoes have gotten the kills so far. 86, getting a couple good pan hits, though. And uh, I do like that he stole that health kit from this scout, so Flutter Scout gonna die. And the Robotic Platoon, I mean, they just need to keep like one or two people on this point, and the rest of them, you know, go out and, and do exactly what 86 is doing, which is interception of the attackers, so they can hold on to the point for as long as possible. They've already got it down to a minute 30 uh, without their opponents ever capturing at all. And it's looking good. Now, I was going to say Bushwhack. I was going to say something about the Bushwhack. Because if you don't know, the Bushwhack is that knife for the sniper that can do crit damage every time you Jirati somebody. And that makes him a really, actually, a pretty good close combat class. But of course, you can't. Oh, he saw you, 86. He won't be able to get you, but he saw you. It does, though, make him a good combat class for uh, up close and personal. Which is sort of how. Uh, yeah. It's not kind of how a sniper's supposed to be, right? He's supposed to have the sniper rifle and do long-range damage, and then if something gets in close, he just dies. But I guess Valve wanted people to have a decent chance at defending themselves up close, because a lot of these maps are designed for close combat anyway. Uh, there's not, not 
terribly long sniper lanes on most of them, so he needed something. He needed some kind of kind of gimme. And that peg leg, by the way, I think it's a reskin of is a reskin of the booties. Whatever it is, it gives him extra health instead of so instead of a grenade launcher. So you you trade your primary weapon entirely for a couple of extra points of health, which is pretty cool. You do see that um, this guy's using him as well, but I think he's just using the Alibaba's. No, he is using that peg leg, which is what is it called? It's called the, uh... Oh, he's got a Balloonicorn, too? No way! Where is it? Oh, the Bootlegger. There we go. Um, yeah, Bootlegger's... It's a nice little weapon, especially for the Pan Tournament, because it brings you up to that 200 health, um, instead of just having 165, like a normal demo man does. So you get 200 health, just like a soldier has. You're faster than a soldier. There's really no downside. Plus, a sticky jumper is more maneuverable than a rocket jumper. Just a little bit. Oh my gosh, my stream chat is going to continue to make these puns until I just ban everybody. I'm thinking about banning everybody. But, uh, you know, even even for YouTube. Even for you, I want to see... Pan, puns. Pan puns. Okay? Cooking puns, frying puns. <laughs> Whatever you want to do. Uh, I need my YouTube comments to be full of them. Pun thread go. That's, that's what I want to see. And Philly J Fry are gonna cap the point, but they have to hold it for like two minutes here because it is in overtime right now for our blue team, the 11th Robotic Platoon, and they look like they are steamrolling so far. Um, Philly J Fry having just a little bit of trouble here, and Flutter Scout wants to hop up on this. There you go, finally getting it. Good milk there on his opponents, but uh, he is getting mobbed by Mr. Kate Upton with the kill. And you see Mr. Kate, he, he had like some damage on him, but he's going to be able to hit somebody who is milked and get some of that health back. It's a nice uh, nice little way to play. Of course, there's no medic allowed because a medic has regening health and, and actually could use like the ampy. Well, I can't use the here, but could use like his metagun or something, which is just lame. So there you go. That's going to be set number one, I think, going in favor of the 11th Robotic Platoon. We'll be right back with the second set. Okay, starting the second set. They have switched colors, which, uh, you know, doesn't matter. Frankly, just doesn't matter. It's it's a perfectly symmetrical map. You see the... Uh, let's try to zoom up a little bit. Perfectly symmetrical map. So, I mean, the way the players actually see the point, like, it'll... Uh, you could, it could be argued that maybe, you know, right-handed versus left-handed is some kind of slight advantage, but that matters more when you're playing a serious, you know, game with, like, snipers that can actually use their guns instead of just everybody running at each other with a pan. But, you know, being fair to the process and all. It matters more if you're doing, like, an attack defense map like Gravel Pit or, um, or any sort of payload map, stopwatch type stuff. Uh, in that case, because, you know, each team needs to attack once and defend once, you do need to switch sides. But in the pan tournament, it's just kind of like, ah, uh, you know, we'll switch colors for fun. Not much of a reason to do it. Still, uh, you know, being fair to the process is important. Potato's coming in. He, he had Gerardi ready. I'm not sure why he didn't throw it here. There you go. Now, oh, he just got four people with that. And still able to deal some damage here. Nobody's hitting him. Wow, Potato's was just dodging it all, staying alive for so long. But Philly J. Fry capped that point. So he wasn't able to take on that many people. And we're going to watch the Cotton Bonbon. Bon. Well, you know what? This, this setup... It actually looks like a cotton bonbon. I, I don't know whether that would be tasty or not, but well done with the choice of hats, at least. Anyway, um, Philly J. Fry not holding that point for very long, so it's not looking good for them in this set either. Not at all. Oh my gosh, my stream chat will not stop with the puns. It's great. It's just great. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. Oh! 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 I'm going to cry now. Just, uh, I'll be right back. Nah, I'm just kidding. Anyway, seeing more panning in mid here, and uh, that's that's all I got. People people are hitting each other with frying pans. Team Fortress 2, ladies and gentlemen, competitive with them. Team Fortress 2 here on Sal TV. Only the most serious and epic of matches. Um, I mean, this is a serious tournament. I don't know what the prize is, but I think there's a prize. <laughs> I, I bet the prize is a frying pan in real life. It's like, here you go, you know, Teflon non-stick coating. You can, uh, you can actually hit people with it in real life and get sent to jail. It could be the greatest. 
so far the robotic platoon, I mean, it's six against three right now. They shouldn't have any trouble capping this unless there's some kind of a pan miracle for the Philly J Fry team. No, they're not going to be able to get this at all. Oh, Scout chasing that. Oh, nice hit there. Scout was trying to chase down Shoop to Whoop. No, you can't use that gun. And Sun Tzu, the art of pan, taking down a couple players here. He is uh, one of our demo men, actually using a, uh, what do they call it, the samurai, that, that Japanese headdress that he's got on. So I don't think Sun Tzu was, is he Japanese? I thought he was Chinese. Yeah, those, those are very different cultures, ladies and gentlemen. Very different cultures. Strange frying pan, that would be a good prize. Strange frying pans for everybody. Oh, okay, all right. So that reminds me that uh, I was talking about this in the stream chat, but I haven't actually mentioned it in the video yet. So you guys need to check out the upcoming Leviathan Gaming versus uh, Epsilon show match. Epsilon being the European team, Leviathan being the American, and we're trying to send Leviathan Gaming to I-46, to that Europe tournament, and uh, it's not going to be a... Oops. Muffler Man having some trouble with that rocket jump again. It's not going to be much of a, um, a tournament without them, I think. But it's, of course, not going to be a pan tournament either. It's going to be a super serial, like, best uh, TF2 team in the world type of tournament. We're already sending Mix-Up guaranteed. We need a little bit more funding to make sure we can send Leviathan Gaming. So tune into that. It's going to be an awesome show match uh, between two of the best teams in Europe and North America. And, of course, they're going to be playing with a ping difference, so this doesn't settle anything. All right, What settles it is them going and actually playing each other at I-46. But uh, they are going to be putting on that show match to try and solicit a couple more donations. We're almost there. We've made a lot of money in donations. And for those of you who have already donated to this whole project and getting people to I-46, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I will be there, and I would love to see us send two, not just one, but two American teams to just go over and wallop those Europeans. Give them the, uh, give them the panning of their lives. But uh, it, it is not possible without your help, and it's it's been awesome to see everybody who's come out and donated so far, um, especially from the big donators, but everybody who has donated even just a dollar, and I know some of you have, it's, it's even if it's all you can afford is a dollar, um, every bit helps to get LG there. So that's enough of, uh, enough of my, my NPR-ish type of, uh, <laughs> of donation drive, I guess. I'm going to... I'm going to keep talking about it for a little while, of course. I, I, it's, it's a cause very important to me. I want to see the biggest TF2 tournament in the world ever. Ever. The TF2 International. Because this kind of sets expectations, right? Um, if we can do this once and we can get sponsors to take note, then maybe it can happen more and more in the future. We can have more international lands, and, and they can be sponsored by, like, big-name sponsors instead of just by community fundraising drives. It would be much better, in my opinion. So, uh... Yeah, but we have had a couple donations. Valve, in particular, I don't think has donated, although uh, at least one employee from Valve, I think, has, which is pretty darn awesome. Pretty awesome, because, you know, they, they can't, I don't think, support it as a uh, financially as a company right now, but they can definitely support it as, a, um, as individuals, because they want to see their game do well. They want to see the players who are the best at the game go fight each other, duke it out. And right now, actually, this is getting kind of be a, a, a close match because Philly J. Fry are losing all but two of their players. They've got one demo man on the point right now. There we go. And he is capping by himself. That is going to be Mr. Kate Upton. Just took down two or three players by himself, and that's going to end it right there with Robotic Platoon capping that one. So remember, this is the second set, and whichever team wins three rounds of this set is going to win the set. Uh, it's the best two of three sets, basically. It's, uh, a little confusing here, but if the robotic platoon wins this set, then they win. Like, that's going to be game over. If Philly J. Fry win the entire set, which is not looking very likely right now, but, you know, they could, uh, then it would go on to a third set, and we could see that tiebreaker going on. Clang, 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 clang. I should, I'm going to go, okay. While this game happens, I'm going to go get a frying pan of my own, just to fit in, so. Be right back. Okay, now I can hit a frying pan whenever I feel like it. Oh, it doesn't make that same sound. Wow, that is not nearly as clangy as a frying pan from... Maybe if I hold it...
Okay, I can kind of make it like ring a little bit, but I gotta be really careful about how I do it. Let's see, uh, is there something more like metallic or drumsticky that I could use? Try this. Oh, wow, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Ice. Okay. So, that's, uh, that's, that's my frying pan action for the day. But at least I fit in now. I can be I can be a ready steady pan or two. And Philly J Fry holding the point soon. There you go. Exactly two minutes left on the clock for Robotic Platoon. They're saying to hit it on my head, but I definitely don't want to hit it on my head. <laughs> Not gonna happen. Um, regardless, uh, I've, I've got a frying pan sitting around. Oh my gosh, it's so disgustingly gross though. Why was this in my pantry? <laughs> Pantry. That's another pun. But seriously, it's got like white stuff in it. Oh man, I'm pretty sure it's just like soap scum from the uh, from the washing machine, the dishwasher. But like, my dishwasher does not work at all. No, yeah, it doesn't smell like anything. My dishwasher just it doesn't work. It like sloshes a bunch of soap on the stuff and then doesn't dry or you know doesn't rinse the soap off. So I just get this like nasty film of soap coating everything. Uh, okay, well, that's <laughs> the world's most boring shoutcast, starring Sal and nobody else. Okay. Um. Oh, nasty hit there on Flutter Scouts. And Mr. Kate Upton coming in once again. Is He, he is top fragging like a boss. The demo pan with the bootlegger, 200 health, just doing crazy. He does finally get taken down there. And will Philly J. Fry be able to defend this, or will our good friend here... Uh, whoa, it's not working. Okay, Sun Tzu, the art of Pan, might have it. Whoosh. Mad Milk coming back out, and Philly J. Fry, they lead in this round, but maybe not for long. They're going to have to get out there and cap again at 86, just doing his, his regular old flanking maneuvers. He's ready to come back in here as soon as his team needs him, which is right about now. Dropping the milk. And it sounds like Philly's losing a bunch of players once again, so it's going to be uh, the 11th Robotic Platoon taking him out. Three against two local numbers at the moment, and there you go, now three against one. With 86 uh, deciding he's going to go try for another flank, and that's exactly what you got to do with these scouts on the, on the pan matches, if we're, if, if we're going to be serious, okay? <laughs> uh going to be serious. I mean, he's, he's coming in and, and he deals damage before they even get to the point. They don't even realize he's there, so he's able to come in and, and not just deal the damage, but chuck a bunch of milk at people and uh, basically focus them down before they can ever do anything. Oh, it's so loud! Pans! Oh my gosh! <laughs> this was the best idea for a tournament ever. No joke. No lie. No sarcasm whatsoever. It was hilarious. 86, though, uh, looks like he hasn't really played a lot of competitive scout before, because he's not doing that thing where you, like, backwards jump. I guess it doesn't really matter in the pan tournament, but um, when you jump up on something and you need to jump up again really quickly, let me see if I can kind of, like, mimic the movement. You, you, as a scout, if you're jumping here, you're going to jump up and hit this. You land on the rock, and then you jump backwards and then jump forwards again. And it's like... It gets you up to the level in the same amount of time, but then instead of, like, humping the wall, you're, you're moving through the air. And that way, you at least can like avoid, you know, s shots and whatever else. It, it's easier to to be dodging when you're doing that than when you're just like brushing up against the wall and trying to jump that way. It's kind of how how you do it. Anyway, this pan tournament um, looks like it may pretty soon go to the 11th robotic platoon with not a single round going to our brony friends. Kind of too bad. Um, brony Rama, as it were, the Philly J Fry friends. But uh, yeah, it's it's two rounds already to the 11th Robotic Platoon here in the second set. And so if they win this set, if they win this round, I mean, the game is over. Okay, game is over here for the Pan Tournament. Uh, Lemon's going to jump in. I would think he'd want to get there a little bit faster, but I guess he's trying to stay with the rest of his team. And uh, maybe he just can't rocket jump very well. <laughs> oh, we got to practice that. Lemon's got to practice to be a competitive player. But, uh, you know, you'll get there. You'll get Oh, there you go. There's a rocket jump. Jumping back in to uh, help the rest of his team out, but oh no, his team is still up. <laughs> Those demo man lines are pretty much the best. Nope, there you go. Eleventh robotic platoon capping that point once again. So already they are out to an early lead. Scout coming in from behind, dealing some damage, but he gets taken out. The sex raptor not able to fulfill his role as a raptor or as sex. I I, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that, but it uh, it died. 
It died way before it ever reached its destination. Sort of like Amelia Earhart. <laughs> uh, too soon? Too soon? No, maybe? Um, anyway, the, the 11th Robotic Platoon, I mean, they've they've got a pretty good defense set up on the point right now. A couple of, you know, a couple of pans, basically. People panning each other to death. But there you go, Philly J. Fry capping that point. And now, Potatoes with his jar of pee. Don't want to get covered in that. Definitely don't want to fight when you're covered in that. Yeah. And the robotic platoon caps very quickly here once again. Oh, no, not quite. Uh, sniper coming in to temporarily stop it, but as soon as he was killed, that point was captured. And the Philly J. Fry losing too many players here right now. So, uh... Mm. Yeah, they're, they're, they're jumping in, and they... They're getting in like two or three at a time, which is good, but then they just get swamped by too many uh, robots from the robotic platoon. So they get one or two kills here and there, but it's just not, it seems like it's not enough to uh, to put together a real push here. And, and here's a problem. So Shoop the Whoop is running in by himself, basically plus forward, which is a command in console in case you didn't know, but he's, he's, you know, if you type in plus forward, it would just make you constantly run forward. And that's what they're doing. They're just, they're just walking straight up to their opponents. The, the red players seem like they're actually trying to, uh, to like back up and make sure they have two or three of them at a time hitting each, you know, hitting their opponents with, um, but yeah, with like the sniper and with the soldier and the scout for whatever. Right now, blue team actually has a good presence on the point because they've gotten a couple kills, but uh, they are walking in often one at a time and trying to go for 1v1 fights, which of course are going to end up being like 3v1 fights, just like they are right now. And so it, when, when you're trying to go 3 versus 1, it's not usually going to work. Oh, Gerardi going down on the soldier, and he does get taken down. Radiant Eclipse knocked out of that fight. So this is looking pretty good right now, i got to say, for the robotic platoon. This might be the end. Mission ends the in 60 end seconds. indeed. So we're just going to watch these guys hang out for a little bit. While I sneeze, because... Uh, Ugh, allergies. You'd think the shots would help, but apparently they're not at all. Oh, man. Um. <laughs> People are talking. So it, if you haven't seen Twitch.tv before, um, in stream chat you can make these weird faces. I think most of them are like faces of the developers or whatever, but uh, they're, they're saying that they, they kind of need one of my like super happy face from when I did the, uh, the pyrovision because apparently that was pretty hilarious. I don't know. I mean, I think it would be pretty hilarious to have that show up in Twitch TV chat. <laughs> be like, oh! If you haven't seen that video, by the way, the uh, the Pyromania video, I, I, it was a pug. I played a pug, and it started out where the item server was down, so we actually couldn't play in Pyrovision, but then uh, about, about, I think, was it two or three minutes in? That's when the Pyrovision started, and everything was glorious. Anyway, this, this uh, game's almost over, so do hit subscribe if you like what you see, or if you want to see some more serious competitive TF2 stuff, which I, I swear I do it occasionally. Um, in fact, most of the time. But, you know, if, if you like what you see, if you like the Salamancer TV, hit subscribe, hit like, hit comment. Make sure you comment a pan pun. I need to see at least one from everybody who watches the video. If I don't, you're letting me down. Anyway, see you guys later.